Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. This is Madden 18 on EA Sports. A pair of tight ends will be on the field today looking to do whatever it takes to give their team an advantage. It's Watson's Ravens going up against Cook's Raiders. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Bay Area as we welcome you to Oakland, California. A short time ago, the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year for 2016, Khalil Mack, getting the folks in silver and black in full roar as his guys get set to match up with Joe Flacco and the Baltimore Ravens. Hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we saw Larry focus on the tight end matchup in his open. You think it's one to watch, don't you? Definitely one to watch because these guys can create such big plays by all the different things they can do. Line up out wide in the slot, line up in a normal tight end position, and then who are you going to cover them with? Is it a linebacker, a defensive back? They create mismatches all throughout the game. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. This will be taken to the back of the end zone, and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Baltimore brought onto the field by Joe Flacco, and they're hoping to erase the memories of what happened in London. Joe Flacco was 8 of 18, 28 yards, two interceptions. Charles, they didn't even cross midfield in the first half. So what you're telling me is simply that their offense didn't pass customs. Oh. Did not get through at all, right? <laughs> yeah, they left that across the pond. That's unbelievable because you just don't expect that out of Baltimore because what you normally get when things aren't going well, a team that can run the football and can control things a little bit. Not in this case. Jacksonville just dominated this one. Worst loss in 20 years for Baltimore. Now a carry here for Terrence West. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. Partner, I think a lot of people thought that Baltimore would draft at least one runner. In fact, they didn't take any skill position players in the draft. So I think a lot's still going to fall on Terrence West. Well, he did have over 1,000 yards from scrimmage last year, a career high. Play fake here on first down. He's going to look deep for Perriman. And incomplete. An excellent play downfield. Should have been picked off, really. But second down instead. And we get a quick peek at the Ravens starting offense. This organization's identity for years has been its defense. But if you take a closer look at the offense in 2016, better than you might think. 17th overall, 12th in passing. They're looking to take the next step now to becoming a top 10 offense in the NFL. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Two yards to go here on third down. Flacco looks to throw and unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. 
Back deep for the Raiders, Jalen Richard. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. So here comes the Raiders offense now onto the field. Bringing them out there, a man who switched coast to join the Raiders this year from Florida State, it's E.J. Manuel. Yeah, that's what happens, because remember, Buffalo switched coaching staffs. So they came in, had different ideas about who would be their guy. E.J. Manuel, as you mentioned, switched coast from Buffalo to Oakland, now trying to get acclimated in a new system. Now Manuel, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley, and he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at 7 0. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. First carry now for Marshawn Lynch. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And Mr. Cooper, Amari, a headliner in this offensive unit. Brandon, it's rare that you get guys so polished coming out of college, but Amari Cooper has carried himself like a pro probably since he was six years old. He is a terrific talent. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Here's Manuel. And it's hauled in by Jared Cook. And that time he's smothered as he's wrestled down. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up the first down. Fresh set of downs here. They go play action here on first down. 
And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Jared Cook, the tight end, was the target. And it's second down. Starting lineup here on defense for Baltimore, a group that had a 2-0 start, looked really as good as anybody, but things came crashing down to earth in week three. They've been absolute ball hawks in the first two games, eight interceptions, and you would expect them to add to that total against Jacksonville with Blake Bortles, who's had trouble with turnovers the last couple of seasons. Instead, he took care of the ball really well. Zero interceptions, zero turnovers by the Jaguars. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. They'll look to throw. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Tony Jefferson. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack. Although that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you face an intentional grounding call. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. They'll look to throw here. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be fourth down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part catching the football right whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it comes together with the legs in this case the feet doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch and a great job by our crew on the camera shot love when you see the grass or on the field turf those rubber pellets flying up great catch on is the punter king to send it away and that ball is going to angle out at the three yard line a beauty taking the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again, so it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They start on the ground with West. And a nice pickup as this one gets them to the 10-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. So second down, three yards to go now. They'll run again here with West. They find some open field here. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far is working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. So the offense has it first and 10. Here's West. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And we take a look now at the defense for the Raiders. Well, sometimes the numbers really don't tell the full picture because Oakland was 26th in total defense in 2016. But guess what? They were tied for first in turnover margin at plus 16 with Kansas City. That makes up for a lot of other issues when you're able to take the ball away. Here we go with second and seven. A 
A break from the ground game here. Flacco. Oh, the rookie nearly had the pick. Probably should have had it. Third down now. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. So now at third and seven, and defensively, it's a dime look. Six DBs. Flacco from the gun. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Here's Sam Cook now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That's taken on the 25. They'll call that a 49-yard punt, but a net of just 39 following the 10-yard return. And the Raiders will take possession. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, oh. two drives with turnovers. <laughs> now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. They'll come out throwing here on first down. But he gets this one to Michael Crabtree. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 14 yards is the pickup there at a Raider first. as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. First down, the run with Lynch. Lynch fighting, and he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. And now here come the Ravens. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? So the fumble recovery, now Flacco to throw. Oh, look over the middle, and he's got Perriman. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. Offense. So that'll back him up five. Still first down.
Flacco. And it's hauled in by Ben Watson. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Took him five tries, but he is able to complete that first pass of the game. And could you hear the exhale all the way up here? <laughs> Not just from him, coaching staff, offensive line, receivers. Now he's off the schneid. Can they get him going in a nice groove where he becomes a little more consistent throwing the football? Because yeah, you miss those first two, but you get up the 0 for, 0 for 4 range. That can be a little tricky, but able to settle in, hopefully. Yeah, now you won't have any confidence issues. Now you can kind of get it back, even with just one throw. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. Catch made there by Brett Perriman. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. That one goes for 24 yards. With Steve Smith retiring, someone's got to fill the void as the number one receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. And Brashad Perriman going into his third year, this needs to be his time. First round pick, of course, missed all of his rookie year with a knee injury, 33 catches last year. He has the ability. Now he has to just go out and do it. And now a first down following that long game. They'll run it with West. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. On the ground, it's West again. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, and they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. The Ravens on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. From the gun, Flacco. And down he goes, brought down a Raiders sack. Oh, free safety blitz, that can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for Baltimore. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. And now here come the Raiders. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. They'll start on the ground with Lynch. And a short gain here across the 10 to the 12. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. 
We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Play action fake. They'll look to throw. His throw incomplete. He was trying to get it to Seth Roberts. And it's third down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. He'll drop to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. 31 yards there and a first down. Just the first quarter, but tackling is going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all offseason about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it, <laughs> it would have been, been a different a story. Long night. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now back to throw. And his throw is incomplete. The tight end, Lee Smith, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Back to throw now on second and 10. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. For five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, if we had any questions, that run kind of answered him. He's still Marshawn Lynch. Hasn't lost a thing. Maybe running with a renewed sense of purpose and energy after that year off. not see another play as time has run out on this first quarter. 7-0 is our score, and we're back to Oakland after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Raiders in possession of the football. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. They'll throw. That's going to go as a loss of seven, and it'll set them back for second down.
on second down, Lynch. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Only two yards on the pick up there, and now they're looking at a long third down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. Back to throw here. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Here's Marquette King now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. here with a run by West and he went nowhere he'll lose yardage back to the 29 it's a loss of a yard there and now second down he came out in a power set but that only served to put more men in the box and guess what if you're going to do that you've got to win up front right your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders they lost all leverage on that play Second down, Flacco now. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. He hits his target. Left side, Watson. 20 yards on both of those plays back to back there. They are moving now. It's another first down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that. And having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. to throw on first and ten with Flacco. And Watson has it right side. And down inside the 15 he goes. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Now West. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. They'll 
They'll run it here. This is Buck Allen. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Looking for two yards here on third down. Flacco, and that is incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. This is an easy one, 23-yarder. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. Tucker now following the main field goal, set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Marshawn Lynch and the Raider offense heading back out there. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit. Maybe featuring other people touching it for a while. And then you've got a chance to come back to it when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. And still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. They start the drive with Lynch. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. fake he'll look to throw finds Roberts left side and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory give him 30 yards there there will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that have explosive plays that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. They'll run it now out of the gun. And now running right through it. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Following the penalty, Lynch. 
<laughs> and down inside the 15 he goes. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. but then quickly brought down. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. The Raiders on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Now on fourth down, Jack Del Rio is going to send on the field goal unit. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point. So no problems converting there. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. begins with a handoff to West. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Cleo Mack's starting to get a really big-time reputation as a pass rusher, and rightly so. So explosive off the edge getting to the quarterback. But he doesn't neglect his run duties as well. How about that tackle right there? Such a package he has. Able to play the run and the pass so well. This is Wentz. 
And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And Watson has it right side. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. now making their way toward the huddle and after the field goal last time we'll see what they can get here at least they got points out of the last drive so. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick <laughs> most of them want to end with a PAT right in this case a field goal they'll take it way better than the alternative which is a punt yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that that weren't happy with that field goal <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point that's it Here's Manuel. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The Raiders on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and seven. They're going to look to throw. And he finds Cook. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Oakland after this. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. To the offense lining up first and ten. They go play action here on first down. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. They get ten more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. First down now, but that clock rolling. Looking to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. 
So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, no chance at all. Way easier said than done. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. He'll look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. They've got another first down. The Raider passing game clicking on all cylinders right now. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. taken down here at about the 11. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. See if they stay on the ground for second down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Raiders on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and nine. Back to throw. This will be caught at about the six. And now the Raven defense going to call a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. kick 
is indeed good. And that'll bring him back within four. But Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. unit is out on the field and they will send this one away this fielded at the two and he will be marked out right there at the 20 yard line the Raven offense now ready for another possession and we'll see how this is played offensively they've got the lead not a whole lot of time left what, what do you think Charles well it's tempting to try and add to your lead but a mistake there that can change things in a big way I say go ahead take the knee get on out for the half So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So they complete the pass and now they face a second down. the gun Flacco over the middle and it's incomplete everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs you can't just be a guy who can run the football you have to be able to catch it as well and he didn't get that done on that play Ravens on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This time it's third and three. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? It's important to do, especially early in the game like they have. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Flacco from the gun. Airing one out from Macklin, deep downfield. And nearly picked off there, almost intercepted. Instead, second down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it, just move on to the next play. And he'll give it here to his running back. 
And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front as we send you cross country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report. Here's Larry Ridley. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. First and 10, the hurry throw would be picked off. Ravens will end up returning it for a touchdown. That puts them up by a touchdown. Here early in the first, Jefferson's able to zero in on the QB here. This goes for a loss of nine. Nelson's going to take down the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Raiders take it early in the second. Defense will win the battle and get the sack. This will go for a loss of seven. So that'll do it for us. Let's get back out to Oakland now as we turn it back over to Brandon Guy. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Raiders offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Third quarter starts with a run from Lynch. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll keep pounding here with Lynch. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. He's fumbled already once, Charles. I'm not going to say that that was in his mind there, but I'm sure that during some of these plays, he is mindful of it. And once you fumble the ball, you know what your team tells you and your coaching staff? Take care of it. Rest of the game. And that does get in your mind a little bit. Sometimes that slows down your effort in trying to get free from tackles. And the defenders know it, too. They sniff that out, don't they? Everybody wants to swarm the football. You know the rule is first guy to hold up the runner, everyone else try and get there and strip the ball free. Give him seven on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it. And then they could make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Now we 
take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Yeah, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And tough starting field position here. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. So I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. The Ravens on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and seven. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. Down goes Joe Flacco in the end zone. It's a safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. And they finally do get him, but not before he reaches the 27. A big hitter. That one goes for 40 yards. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They run again on first down, Lynch. And he's going to take this down to about the 17. 
Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Second and very short here, less than a yard. And he'll give it here to his running back. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. He'll look to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Amari Cooper, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. It's a loss of two, now third down. So the myth has been shattered. Every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle. The Raiders on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third down and 12. They'll set up to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. And his kick is right there. It's good. And with that, they move ahead by a point here in this third quarter. So it's his third field goal now of the ball game, and they have needed his leg because this last one gives him the lead. It's been a back and forth kind of a game, Brandon, but now you've got to tell your defense, hey, we need a stop here so we can let this momentum carry us through to the next drive. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. And they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. 
A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down following the run. Flacco. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. The Ravens on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and three. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. False start, offense. That was a third and somewhat manageable, now not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. Now Flacco. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. And we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. <laughs> punt five on the return and that will come the offense as they take over Marshawn Lynch heading back out into the huddle he is fully awake now if he didn't get off to the start that he normally does they've got his attention he's running it well you think they set off the alarm clock at the half I think that's what went down I know this having played on the defensive side of the ball if you do a really good job it's a great runner and you go into the half, you're excited, you're fired up, you think the game plan is working, but in the back of your head, there's that little bit of nagging doubt. Can we do this for four quarters? So far, that's not happening. They'll run with Marshawn Lynch, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run again with Lynch, and he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. And as they say, that's a no-no. 
Got to be able to understand where you are on the field and not cross the line before throwing the ball downfield. The Raiders on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 16. They'll look to throw. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Marquette King now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. to throw on first and ten with Flacco. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Offense still needing ten yards. Second down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen. The defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost, but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. And he'll give it here to his running back, and he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. A break from the ground game here. Flacco. That's caught out left by Perriman. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. Flacco to Perriman, and the Ravens have a first. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and, of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. So here we go, first and 10 now. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Ah! 
Now a handoff here to his running back. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in the East Bay. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. The Ravens on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and seven. Here's Flacco. That is caught. It's Perriman. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. First and 10 here for Flacco. He hits his target, left side, Watson. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Now a handoff looking right. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, add that play to his resume reel because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big-time penetration, and throw people for losses. Flacco here on second down. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The offense on third down, they're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now it's Flacco. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Khalil Mack able to track him down for a loss of 13. And it'll bring up fourth down. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This for a fourth quarter lead. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. 
And with that, they will move ahead by two here in the fourth. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know that field goals are going to be enough to get us home. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Manuel. He'll dump it off complete to Lynch. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. A gain of four on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. Here's Manuel. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. He'll drop to throw. Finds Roberts left side. He gets seven out of it, and he also gets a first. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Ten yards still left on second down. They're going to look to throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Now back to throw. And Cook has it, left side. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll run for it. Lynch. 
It's a pick up of three that time. Good enough for an Oakland first down. Fourth and two is normally a passing down, but in this case, they decided to give it to their running back, and he did get the first down, although not by much. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They'll drop to throw. That is incomplete. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. Second down. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the Ravens have got it. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Flacco. Quick slant. That's caught by the veteran Macklin. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. fake here on first down and he's going to drop this off to his fullback and he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29 yard line they'll get a couple yards on that one and it'll be second down and the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher it often works when they decide to dial it up Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Second down, Flacco now. And he's going to be 
taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Justin Ellis coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Flacco and the Ravens now, after the sack, need something good here on third and long. From the gun, Flacco. He's got his man, that's Wallace. And he's brought down, but not before reaching the eight-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. Red zone opportunity. Flacco gives to Allen, and he'll be knocked down sideways right at the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. So second and goal here from the nine. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by David Anderson. He's at the 40. Pass the 20. 10. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Raider defense delivers a score. Coaches always tell their players someone's got to make a big play. But what they mean is a game-altering play, a game-changing play. A turnover force, and we just got that. I mean, how about that play, Brandon? Yeah, a pick six, fourth quarter, that is a game changer. Someone read their keys, and someone had the courage to go after the ball right then and there. And it gives them the lead. Now for the point after. And the lead is up to five. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That'll be taken in the end zone. 
And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one, that didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play too. Flacco right back to work after the pick six. He hits West underneath. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. They'll give him eight on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. like some movement there. Let's get the call. Now the crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. First and 15 here behind the chains. They go play action here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route <laughs> for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And he's got the hook up to Macklin. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, if you do read man covers, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. They go pass again with Flacco to Allen on the dump off. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. And they'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. They'll run for it with West. And that little deke, the juke move that we saw, able to give him the first down yardage before he's brought down. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this.
So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. First and ten, and Flacco looking to throw. A look over the middle, and he's got Perriman. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Back to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, and it's third and short. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you've been overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Laundry on the field. This is going to be a false start on the offense. Sometimes you have to slow things down a little bit when things get heated. The cadence has to be slow and deliberate at times to make sure your team's ready to go. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. They'll look to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Raiders pick it up. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On the carry, it's Lynch. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. And now the Raven defense going to call a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, they'll pound it with Lynch. And he'll get this up to about the 40. And now the Ravens are going to take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. They'll run it. Here's Lynch. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. 
And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Marquette King now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. He's back to throw. Well, there's that man again. It's complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A very solid gain of 27. Back to throw. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Jeremy Macklin, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. point in the game. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Flack on the throw. Wide open receiver complete. An incredible play there. They do get big yardage, but they're still stopped a yard or two short, and it's fourth down. Here we go. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Flacco firing quickly here, and that's complete. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment defense. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Pressure mounting, Flacco. And too much on that one. It's out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. Chris Moore was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. I'm gonna need some help with this one. How did he miss it? wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, 
incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Flacco looks to throw. And he's across for the touchdown, and it's likely the game winner here in the closing stages. How many people are watching this one right here who gave up? Because that score, they might want to try and rush back into this stadium. <laughs> yeah, what looks like is going to be the game-deciding score, although a little bit of time left, so you can't count your chickens before they're hatched. Well, they better come back in here and watch this one because you and I, we're not going anywhere. We want to see this one play out. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. Flacco. And this is caught. And it's a three-point game. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Manuel. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here's Manuel. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Crabtree, the intended receiver, and it's second down. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. 
And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Oakland, we sign off. So long, everybody.